What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I've got a really cool video for you guys today. It is all about winter jerkbait fishing. You know, it's a time of year where fishing can be really tough depending on where you live, but one of the best baits to make these fish bite to trigger these inactive fish is a jerkbait. So we're gonna dive deep into that. We're gonna catch a couple nice fish in the process. Before you guys check out the rest of the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it if you guys do that. Like the video, drop a comment below. Um, and hey, if you guys are into podcasts, I also wanted to give a shout out to the Angler's Happy Hour podcast. It's a podcast that I'm a part of with two of my best friends. I post the episodes here on this YouTube channel. If you prefer to uh, listen to them, you can go on iTunes and listen to them there as well. But check out Angler's Happy Hour, subscribe to the channel, and uh, watch some cool jerkbait action coming right at you guys. No doubt. Well, I let Levi talk. I'm not one into new credit cards and stuff. Uh-huh. Last year, I was buying five or six grass. Got him finally. Man. There's about four of them with it. That's a decent fish, too, man. Real nice one. Real nice one. Yeah, guys, so we've been out here for a couple hours this morning and a lot of fish not committing to the bait. We finally got the right one to commit. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll take that for number one. All right. That's a chunk of a fish right there. On the deep running Berkeley Stunna, just over some grass. This time of year, you might not get the most bites, but gosh, winter, you can catch some good ones. As I was cutting the clip, Blaine just hooked and lost another one. So maybe we're on to something, guys. That's a chunk. There's another one. Golly, they're stacked up back here. I thought I put it on anchor. Just... Yeah, I've got a calibrated still. It still doesn't even have the calibration. <laughs> yeah. right. Not like the last one, but we will take every fish this time of year. beautiful thing about this bait guys is it sinks a little bit so what you can do with it is you can get it down a little bit deeper another jerk bait which I think is key right now this thing it, it's going about I don't know six seven eight feet right now eight feet on a long cast especially if you give it pauses So what's cool about this jerkbait, guys, you can see I'm throwing the plus one. It goes a little bit deeper than the standard, but it's got a super, super slow sink to it. So what that allows me to do is I can cast it out and it doesn't, it still looks like it's suspending when you're just kind of looking at the bait as it sits in the water, but it's got, it's got that slow sink. So at the end of the cast, it's gotten down probably an extra, oh, I'd say two or three feet. So it can be as deep as eight feet by the end of a standard cast. And now if you wanted to get it even deeper, if you really wanted to get it down to the fish, you can pause it, you know, give it a good 10, 20 second pause. And, um, you know, you can sink it right over top of deep trees, brush piles, habitat, stuff like that. There's the grass right there, guys. Nice and green still. It's, you know, I said in my last fishing report, hey, I think a lot of the fish are getting out of the shallows, the bait's getting out of the shallows. and. Um, I've been proven wrong. You know, it's been kind of a weird deal that the fishing's actually been halfway decent out here, but um, I'll take it, you know, and that's how fishing goes. You can never 100% predict it. I was about to give up on uh, this lake and a couple others for the winter, and um, they're pumping some fish out right now, so that's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, anyways, oh, there he is. Gonna have to cut that last part out. Double. All right, dude. They seem to be a little bit ganged up, don't they? All 
All right. Oh, <laughs> glad that broke right there. Must have had a fray in my line. Stop, buddy. Stop, stop, stop. Such a pretty built fish, though. Give me the needle nose. Hey, cheers me first. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> On the side there? Yeah. Yeah, it just keeps getting better every year and, and I'm more confident going further and further out with it, right? A lot of times if I'm looking for fish, I'll, I'll come in a little tighter, but. Man, there's a lot of fish down there. Got him. Oh gosh, you come off. That one hit it on the pause. These yes, are loaded with fish. There are. There are a ton of fish around them too, man. Got him. <laughs> My bait was on the bottom, so I started jerking it upwards. He ate it that way. That little upward snap. Such a good way to get some fish to commit. All right, so the setup we're using here today, guys, is the Berkeley Stunna. It's the 112 plus. It's the deep diving jerk bait, like I talked about before. It's a it's a suspending slash slow sinking jerk bait. It sinks very, very slowly. The fish aren't gonna notice it when they're looking at it on the paws. But what that allows this thing to do is get a little bit deeper to those fish that are a little bit more lethargic, that are a couple feet down below what a standard jerk bait's gonna get to. I was getting this thing down to about eight feet today and it was really, really helpful. Um, really good natural shad color. It's like a stealth shad color right here. Uh, you're gonna match that to the water color. So like if you're fishing stained water, you don't wanna throw a jerk bait in dirty water, but if you're fishing stained water, something like more of a solid white um, a pearl, a table rock shad, those work really well. But in the clear water today, you could see down about four feet. That was my go-to. Uh, I do recommend when you're looking for like a rod and reel for a jerk bait, it's worth spending a little extra money if you can do so on a really good reel. This is an Abu Garcia Xenon MGX reel. It's a really nice reel. It's got a great brake system. And throwing a jerk bait, especially into the wind, has never been the most, the, never been the easiest thing for a bass fisherman to do. Jerk baits are getting a lot better. This bait right here has a weight transfer system. I don't know if you guys can see that little ball in there, but on the cast, the ball goes to the back of the bait, so it'll allow you to cast it without rolling. And then when the bait's sitting still, the ball transfers into another little section of the bait where it's gonna allow the bait to suspend really well. But uh, the weight transfer helps a lot, but still, it's still a fairly light bait. You're throwing it into the wind, uh, throwing light lines. So a good reel is really critical. And one that's got a good drag system too. Uh, these reels by Abu is kind of neat. The Xenon reels have a clicking drag almost like a spinning rod So you guys might be hearing it throughout the course of the video But as as that drag gets pulled out you can hear it clicking so you actually know it Whereas in the past with with a lot of other bait casters You know they, they pull drag and you can feel it a little bit, but you don't hear it You don't know exactly how much that fish is taking and and how to handle that fish So another cool feature about this thing and then the rod probably the most important thing on the whole setup is using a really limber rod. You know, these fish, they're not the most aggressive. They're taking the bait. Sometimes they might only have one hook in them. And uh, having a soft, limber rod is going to allow those fish to make those surges and pull without actually, you know, coming unhooked. I think today I probably had a dozen bites and I might have lost two. So overall, that's a pretty good ratio for throwing treble hooks in the wintertime. I'll take that anytime. If you can give me, you know, 
uh, 12 out of 14 fish that bite the bait, I will take it. Um, this right here is a winch rod from Abu Garcia, and it's a composite rod. So what that means is it's a blend of graphite and fiberglass. Uh, when you pick it up and hold it, it's it's a lightweight rod. It doesn't feel fiberglassy. It feels like a graphite rod, but when you're fighting a fish, you can tell that it's not just standard graphite. It really has, it, it really absorbs that shock of the fish really well. Uh, it's a 610 rod, and you can actually see it says jerk baits right on it. It's really designed for this. Being a little bit shorter at 610, it allows you to jerk that thing, be you know, snapping your snapping your rod tip towards the water surface without like slapping it in the water, without hitting the side of the boat, stuff like that. So a little bit shorter rod is always nice with the jerk bait, and it's a little less fatiguing too as you're throwing out th uh, throughout the course of the day. Again on the up. <laughs> All right. Those fish are committing really close to the boat, which is sometimes a rarity. And that's going to be it for you guys. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Video is a little bit different today. I did the intros and outros here in the garage. I, I you know, wanted to give some tips and stuff like that throughout the video, so we'll see how it turns out. Still learning the whole YouTube thing, but I do appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm uh, going to try to keep the videos coming. Be on the lookout for another Angler's Happy Hour podcast. Got another fishing report coming up. And I got another week or two before I have to hit the road and go to Texas for my next tournament. So I'm going to try to get on the water a couple more times, too. We will see you guys at the next one.